Nurse Mike here and welcome to SimpleNursing.com. Before we get today's lecture started, please remember to access your free quiz and preview our cool nifty new study guides not here on YouTube. Click the link right up here at any time during this video. Yeah, that heart inside of you is kind of like a four bedroom suite. Two rooms being upstairs, the attic atrium, and two rooms downstairs, the basement ventricles. These four rooms have four doors we call valves. And well, when they slam shut, we hear this sound called lub and dub. S1 is our lub, our tricuspid and bicuspid valves closing, and S2 is that dub, the aortic and pulmonic valves closing. Now those basement ventricles at the bottom of the heart is where all the important action happens. They pump out oxygen-rich blood to the body on hemoglobin attachments of RBCs, red blood cells. This oxygen is vital, so I call it the money of the body. Without money, you have no honey. So no oxygen, your body goes broke and dies. Now, how do we measure oxygen being pumped out from the heart? Well, the amount of blood pumped out from that left ventricle in 60 seconds, or one full minute, is cardiac output. This means oxygen to the body, also called perfusion. Now for our electrical conduction, I call train tracks. We use our nifty acronym, sweet apples have a big price. So starting off at sweet, our SA node contracts at 60 to 100 beats per minute. This is known as our main boss pacemaker. Next is our apples, which is our AV node, 40 to 60 beats per minute, known as our backup pacemaker. After the AV node, the charge goes to the bundle of hiss, which kind of looks like fangs on a snake, so I call it the bundle of hith. Down the big bundle branches to the Purkinje fibers, I call the Purkinje fingers because they squeeze those ventricles and all that blood pushes out to the body. Last thing about Purkinje fibers, these pacemaker cells in between them contract at a rate of 20 to 40 beats per minute. Sometimes it's known as our last backup pacemaker. All right, so what are we gonna see on the EKG, our earthquake paper? Well, P, Q, R, S, and T are our little choo-choo trains on these train tracks of electrical conduction. So the P wave is known as our atrial squeeze, our atrial contraction. Basically a depolarization, a decompressing, sending out of a charge. Our big QRS wave is known as our ventricle squeezing, or basically contracting, depolarizing, decompressing, basically sending out a charge. And the T wave is for the ventricles relaxing, repolarizing, basically refilling with blood because whatever goes up must come down. Now the term normal sinus means coming from the SA node, the sinus atrial node, like normal. So normal sinus rhythm is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Now normal sinus Brady is less than 60 beats per minute, kind of like the Brady Bunch TV show filmed back in the 1960s. So I remember Brady means less than 60 beats per minute. Normal sinus tachy is more than 100 beats per minute. And there's a lot going on on that EKG paper, so the paper kind of looks tacky. So using our five steps, let's interpret our sinus rhythms. So step one, counting the R peaks, then multiplying by 10, because every single strip is usually a six second strip. Just like I showed you in our full video, normal sinus rhythm is between 60 to 100 beats per minute. Normal sinus Brady is less than 60 beats per minute. And normal sinus tack is over 100 beats per minute. Now step number two, the rhythm, all of these will be regular and evenly spaced out between our R peaks. Step three, the P wave will be present, normal and upright. Step four, the PR interval is gonna be normal, basically less than five mini boxes. And lastly, our QRS, those ventricles depolarizing or basically squeezing, it's gonna be normal, upright, and less than three of those mini boxes wide. Nursing interventions and treatments for normal sinus rhythms. So what are we gonna do about it, guys? Well, what's the main patient outcome goal? Well, it's always in any crazy dysrhythmia, we want to restore a normal rhythm. So for normal sinus rhythm, 60 to 100 beats per minute, guys, it's normal. We're not gonna do a nursing action. Now for normal sinus Brady, less than 60 beats per minute, it gets a little bit tricky and sticky. We only perform an action or initiate a plan of care only if the patient is showing signs and symptoms of low oxygen. So if there's no signs and symptoms, then they're probably like an athlete like Kobe O'Brien or Michael Phelps and they 
pretty much naturally have this low resting heart rate. Their heart is so strong it could pump enough oxygen with less beats. No, not those beats, we're talking about heartbeats. Oh my, I, okay, I can't work like this, people. Okay, now if yes, if they are showing signs and symptoms of low oxygen, like pale dusky skin or cyanotic blue lips, then we're gonna treat the causes first by decreasing the dose of medications that are causing the low heart rate. These are known as negative chronotropic drugs. Chrono is meaning time, so less time, less beats per minute. Now the famous negative chronotropic drugs that slow the heart are beta blockers that end in LOL, calcium channel blockers that end in Zem or Pine, as well as digoxin known as digitalis. Now if stopping or lowering these medications don't fix the problem, then we'll give atropine, an anticholinergic drug which increases that heart rate. Now a simple way to remember atropine is atop the pine tree. So the heart rate goes up way high, kind of like it's on top of a big pine tree. So atropine on top of the pine. Now for normal sinus tachy, more than 100 beats per minute. Again, we're treating the causes like fever, like stress, anxiety, pain, nursing school. Actually, that does sound exactly like all the signs and symptoms we have with nursing school. If that doesn't work, we'll use VBS. Vagal maneuver, when you bear down like you're pooping, or carotid massage, right here, it's gonna drop the heart rate. Or we'll use beta blockers, or LOL ending drugs, like metropolol, which brings down that heart rate by blocking beta-1 receptors in the heart. So calcium channel blockers are Zem and Pine ending drugs, such as Diltiazem or Nifedipine, which both relax the blood vessels and bring down that contractility, which reduces workload on the heart. Well guys, that wraps up our normal sinus rhythms. Thanks for watching. For our full video and new quiz bank, click right up here to access your free trial. And please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel. Last but not least, a big thanks to our team of experts helping us make these great videos. All right, guys, see you next time.